For seven generations straight, Intel kept the same core and thread count across all the core processors as AMD was hardly catching up with FX CPUs. As soon as AMD launched Ryzen first generation family, Intel suddenly made big decisions by giving the 8th gen core processors a few more cores or it would have been disastrous for Intel as from the very first generation, the Ryzen CPUs brought a good core thread configuration and AMD was just getting warmed up. Intel's sudden move clearly showed that it didn't care for gamers unless AMD forced it to improvise. However, the improvements by Intel Intel quickly escalated in every generation, where Intel moved on from just two cores and four threads on the Core i3 to four cores and eight threads, and the higher end chips got even bigger increase in core count with the adaptation of performance and efficient cores since the launch of Alder and Raptor Lake families. In this course, AMD kept its core and thread count exactly the same in all the five generations, including the latest Zen 4 based Ryzen 7000 CPUs. This helped out Intel to gain an advantage in productivity since now the core processors are featuring way more cores and threads compared to AMD counterparts. For instance, the Core i5-13600K now easily beats the Ryzen 7600X by a significant margin in multi-core tests and also beats the Ryzen 7700X quite convincingly. Considering this, you might be thinking that AMD must have some plans to increase the core count in the next generation, but unfortunately this is not the case. In a recent interview with Tech Power Up, AMD revealed its plans for Zen 5 based Ryzen 8000 CPUs as well as its plans for leveraging power from artificial intelligence. As as I said before in the interview, AMD's Vice President David was asked whether they are repeating Intel's mistake of stagnating on the current core count and to that he answered that the problem with increasing the core count is linked to memory bandwidth. At a certain point, the core count exceeds the memory bandwidth so significantly that more cores do not benefit the users as they should. This means that we need to have even higher bandwidth memory in order to take full advantage of all the cores. He said that they are currently looking into solving this issue before increasing the core count and this is why the leaks of of Zen 5 based CPUs having the same core thread count are likely to come true. That said, according to AMD, it's not meaningful for the company to base their Ryzen roadmap entirely on increasing the core count and they hope that in the near future, they are going to increase the core count along with providing better memory compatibility in order to maximize the performance. One thing which I thought was interesting is how AMD's VP was constantly emphasizing on making Zen 5 CPUs as soon as possible. He said that they are trying to bring Zen 5 to desktop as soon as possible and that they are working very very hard to get into the market as fast as possible. This could be due to the pressure AMD is feeling from Intel as the blue team is already prepared to launch Raptor Lake refresh in October followed by Meteor Lake before this year ends. Not only that but Arrow Lake will soon follow Meteor Lake which is almost guaranteed to come on desktop and this is definitely putting AMD under more pressure to finalize Zen 5 as soon as possible. However, there is one big problem that AMD hasn't solved yet. Unlike Intel which has brought a hybrid architecture for Alder and Raptor Lake CPUs, AMD AMD doesn't have such a design for the next 10 CPUs that could compete with the higher core count Intel chips. When David was asked about it, he said that they have looked at different core types but they don't think that P and E cores will work for them. This is because two types of cores will have different instruction set architecture which makes it complicated to distribute the right workload on the right cores consistently. No doubt that AMD has already created Zen 4 and Zen 4C which are a little different from each other but they are almost identical due to which they don't have different ISA like performance and efficient cores on Intel chips. AMD says that they don't think desktop is the right platform to implement such a chip design but laptops will be much more practical platform due to power constrained environment. Apart from that, AMD also wants to make sure that the next gen laptop should also bring more power efficiency and for that they want to leverage AI capabilities through AMD Ryzen AI. Recently, Dr. Lisa also called AI as the number one strategy for AMD's products and this has been just confirmed by Vice President that AI will make things much easier regardless of what type of work you want to do. So whether you are a gamer or a content creator, AI will be AMD's best bet for getting the work done quickly without consuming more power. When asked if energy efficiency is the main selling point of AI, AMD's VP answered in affirmation and said that a highly energy optimized engine in SoC to do the job that won't kill the battery life is crucial and even though a CPU can do all those things, it will completely destroy the battery life. However, by using an AI engine, a lot of work can be done quickly without compromising on the battery life. Unfortunately, Unfortunately for AMD, this is not an exclusive feature to Ryzen CPUs because Intel has already shown how Meteor Lake CPUs will be capable of using AI to execute complex operations. In order to achieve that, Intel has developed a low power AI engine called VPU which you can learn about in this video right here. Watch the video and let me know your thoughts on Zen 5 in the comments below. Lastly, hit the like button if you found the video informative and subscribe for more videos like this. Also turn on the notifications to never miss any future videos and I will see you in the next one.